All right, before we get into this video, I want to let you guys know that our new indicator is almost done. This is something that I'm super, super proud of and something that I know you guys will love. We're literally going to give you the exact entry points across any asset on any time frame. This is going to be part of the Easy Algo Pro Bundle, but we're also going to be releasing this indicator for free to the entire community. So if you want access to this indicator, join our Discord at discord.gg slash easy trades. And when this indicator is fully launched, I'll make an announcement so you guys can get access. All right, what's going on everyone? So I thought I'd make this video on the best settings to use when trading with the Easy Algo trading indicators. I'm gonna be sharing with you guys the settings that I like to use on Easy Algo. Now, when people first get into trading, they want fast money. And what tempts them the most, I've found, is scalping, right? Going to a one to five minute time frame, they think just because the trade happened sooner that they can make more money because they can enter more trades in a 24 hour time frame. This is not how it works. And Easy Algo was not made for scalping. Now, can you scalp with Easy Algo? Yes but you must do it the correct way. And the correct way is only taking trades when price is at a key level on a higher time frame. So I wanna make that very clear right off the get-go. If you have joined Easy Algo and you wanna scalp on the one to five minute time frame, simply entering and exiting trades throughout the day, then you're sadly mistaken because the truth of the matter is that you need to be taking trades at key levels. Now, Easy Algo makes it very simple to identify these key levels for you. So then you can go down to a lower time frame for entry. And this is actually how Easy Algo was designed, right? The goal is to identify key levels on a higher time frame and then go down to a lower time frame using the Easy Algo confluences for your entry. Now, as far as the settings go, we're gonna jump into the settings panel here and we're gonna go over each individual setting. So currently I have the signal type on swing. Now this doesn't really matter, all right? The buy and sell signals because we don't rely on these signals alone. In fact, we mainly use these signals for confirmation after we've already entered the trade. But personally, I like to use smooth unless I'm on a higher time frame. Since I'm on the one hour time frame currently using the higher time frame levels, which you're going to get into, I'll keep the signal type on smooth, but you can use swing if you choose to as well. As you can see, there's less false signals with swing. However, the caveat to this is that these signals will be a little bit more delayed than if you choose the smooth or the fast option. Now, I only like to use the fast option when finding an entry on a lower time frame, such as the five to 15 minute. In this example, I'm gonna actually use swing because I like how these signals look here. So we're gonna keep that on swing. The signals offset doesn't really matter. And for the AI signals, I like to keep them on strong. All right, so change the AI strength to strong. We have these strong AI signals, which can help us identify future price movements. Now the signals are great, but they only work when used in confluence with key levels. Now this is where the multi time frame support and resistance come in. I've really been liking these six hour levels. Now, these levels are not in the free trading view subscription. So you're going to need to go with the pro plan to unlock these six hour levels. But this is what I use. This is what Error uses. This is what Jay uses. These levels are really on the money. I can literally show you here if I go back. See, we have a six hour resistance level, right? Price rejects from this resistance level, goes down, forms a support level. You can see that the momentum oscillator is creating some bullish divergences as price is consolidating at the support level. That's a bullish checkmate pattern. You see now we've reclaimed this six hour support level. So you'd be looking to long any retests. We fail this level, bounce from the six hour support zone once again. Then we have another breakout and retest of the six hour level, which is where you long and then look for shorts at the six hour resistance level so you can see price literally plays ping pong with these levels and these levels are non-repaint so these are real time you can see currently at the moment i'd be looking for short positions because we are at this higher time frame golden pocket in confluence with this six hour resistance level and you can see we're already rejecting this level so maybe look for a short and then look for a long here at this six hour support level in confluence with that one hour GP for a possible long position. So the six hour levels give you a very clear range to take trades. When price is at a resistance level, look for shorts. And when price is at a support, look for longs. Now it's best when you have other confluences as well. That's why we have the auto golden pocket. So whenever you see an auto golden pocket, 
aligning with a six hour support or resistance zone, then that is a high probability setup in my opinion. And you can go to a lower time frame to try to find that entry. You can leave these settings on default. Now, if you don't have the six hour support zones, you can change it to the four hour zones. They work great as well. And then maybe if you want some more confluence, turn on the 12 hour zones and look for overlapping zones, right? So as you can see, we have a 12 hour zone overlapping this four hour zone, same with right here. So these are our key resistance levels for the time being, meaning I'm going to be looking for short positions here until price reclaims this level. And then I can look for that breakout and retest to go long. Now, although we're using key levels on a higher time frame, that doesn't mean we have to necessarily enter on the higher time frame. In fact, I'd actually recommend going to a lower time frame for that entry. So oftentimes when I'm talking about finding an entry on let's say a five to 15 minute time frame, I'm only talking about using that time frame for the entry. The levels don't change. And this is very, very important to understand. You're always trading off of key levels. It's just the time frame of when you get that entry. Now you can also use even higher time frames for entry such as two three four hour time frames for this i'd recommend to either wait for a reaction or enter a limit dca so in this example we have the six hour support zone maybe wait for a rejection and that would be your entry right around here again it comes back down to the six hour support zone you can see price is consolidating we also have a bullish divergence as confirmed that can be your entry same thing with this short position you can see we have a three drive pattern forming right around here price creating three highs with the momentum oscillator, giving us a sell dot, wait for price to reject and then enter a short position, et cetera, et cetera. So it's kind of up to you as to what time frame you're entering, but keep in mind the levels are the same. And that's really what I wanna hammer in this video is that you're always trading key levels no matter what. So how you actually enter the trade, whether it's a limit on a higher time frame or going down to a lower time frame for entry, doesn't really matter. It's kind of up to you. Now, if you don't have a lot of time to trade, which I know a lot of you guys don't, I'd recommend entering limits on a three to four hour time frame using these levels that I have on my chart. Personally, if I'm setting limits on a higher time frame, this is how my settings would look like. I pretty much keep everything else default. The reversal bands can be very helpful for setting DCAs. We've already identified that we have a key resistance level right here. We also have that golden pocket and we can see we have the reversal bands. So this can help us set limits. Again, just another added confluence, the same with our trend dashboard uh, that mostly helps identify higher time frame trends. So if you're trading with the trend, you can use the trend dashboard. I'm not gonna get into that in this video. And then for the momentum oscillator, keep the default settings. What you're looking for on the momentum oscillator is for this wave trend to be in these overbought and oversold zones, as well as the bullish and bearish divergences at key levels. Keep in mind when you're using these buy and sell dots, these bullish and bearish divergences, you want to stack confluences. I've made a ton of videos on stacking confluences, but the goal with Easy Algo is to give you guys the most amount of confluences as possible. This trade is actually a perfect example. Well, really these two trades right here, you can see we have this six hour support zone. Price is respecting this zone well. So this is another thing. Look for zones that price has respected well in the past, that price has rejected from two, three, even four times in the past. These are going to be your strongest levels. And this is where you can expect a reaction from. So as you can see, we've rejected this level one, two, three, four times, come back down to test this level. We have the reversal band confluence here. We have the bullish divergence that confirms on this candle, which would be your entry, or you can wait for the buy signal to follow. Personally, I'd wait for that bullish divergence, stop loss below this zone, and then you can target the six hour resistance zone as your next take profit. If you miss this initial trade, what you can do is look for the breakout and retest. So right here, I see we have a breakout of this six hour support zone. And if we go to a lower time frame, I'm on the five minute time frame right now. If you guys wanna enter on a lower time frame, this is how you do it, right? Wait for a breakout and retest of that higher time frame zone. Price comes right into this six hour support zone and we get those bullish divergences in the oversold zone with that buy signal. So this is going to be your trade entry, stop loss below that low, and this is how you can get those insane risk to reward ratios, right? A five risk to reward ratio because we went down to a lower time frame for entry and we're still using those higher time frame levels. Again, 
on the 15 minute time frame right here. We come right into the six hour support zone. We reject with a buy dot on the oscillator. So it's very important that you only use the oscillator at key levels. And that is why we've made easy algo to give you guys the levels, to give you guys the confluences. So all you have to do is stack your confluences and pull the trigger. Now, well, these are my favorite settings. This is how I use easy algo personally. The key takeaways are that the levels don't change. So you're always trading based off of key levels. Look for levels that have been well-respected in the past. If you see a key level has broken, don't enter until there is a retest. You can set limits on a higher time frame or you can go down to a lower time frame to pinpoint the entry. Just keep in mind when you're going to a lower time frame for entry, you need time to trade. So if you don't have time to do that, then it might be best to set limits. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more trading content, and I'll see you guys next video.